Uh, so hi, my name is Adira Mohan. Uh, I'm a wall artist and an entrepreneur. Now you might think what a wall artist is. So do you remember when we were kids, we used to like paint or draw on the walls of our houses or rooms with you know chalk or crayons? Well, the only difference between that kid and me is that I get paid for doing that. A crowd. <laughs> It wasn't all that easy to actually reach here and uh, with this small talk I'll try to give you a small tip regarding this journey of mine. So let's call this chapter 1 the beginning, a little about me. So art has been a part of my life since childhood, little did I know that it would be my entire life. Something that started like a simple hobby turned out to be quite an interesting career option. So being born in a Malayali, normal Malayali family, it was either an option between being an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer or the very famous IAS. And I took the leap towards civil service and joined the college to do BA economics, which at that time was the only subject that I thought I mastered it. Boy, was I wrong when I reached college. I was not the smartest, nor was I the brightest girl in class. Neither did I have the... I was the girl with the most attendance. And being confused in life was definitely my favorite companion. And art and being involved in art was definitely my sanctuary in college. So with a lot of what next conversations with my peers, I decided to do a corporate job in Bangalore. Because you know, why not? I wanted to enjoy life and which better city to do that other than Bangalore. So this brings us to the next chapter of my life, corporate rush. Now, um, so I, had, I was living in a small studio, my friends were living right next to me and I had a salary good enough to manage a month's shenanigans. So I still remember the day, the first day of going to work, I hopped on the bus all happy and cheerful and be, being creative and artistic, you tend to be a little too observant. And I started noticing the people in the bus. Some were you know, most of them looked depressed. Some were having breakfast. Some were looking at their phones. But all of them had one common thing. They all had this same mundane, monotonous life going on look on their faces. And I kept thinking, what is wrong with them? I mean, they are in Bangalore. What could possibly go wrong? A month from then, I was in that same bus with the same look on my face. That's, it, it took me four months in total to realize, damn, what have I done? So, from there, fortunately, one day my boss came up to me and asked me if I would be interested in painting a wall on the office space. And I said yes in a jiffy because on those days I didn't have to work. So a work that would have taken like two days to complete, I took my sweet time with it and finished it in like four days. And that's when I realized that I can stand and paint for six hours straight, but I cannot sit in one place and do a desk job for six minutes even. Having had this realization, I quit my job in a week. And I still remember my boss coming up to me and asking, are you quitting the job because I made you pay the wall? And I thought for a bit and I said, yeah, yes, in a way, yeah. Anyhow, so I quit my job and I took up a small diploma course in graphic designing. Now I had no money but a ton of expenses to meet and it's back here. So I started even while uh, doing the graphic designing course. I took up small designing, digital designing works to 
been my expenses, which did not cover even half of it. So I started working on a part-time basis in a dubbing studio, which was right next to me, right next to where I live. Which brings us to the next chapter, AOM Studios Private Limited. See, being young and having had no particular practical knowledge about the world, I thought I'd start my own business. Because you know, why not? And to be very honest, my family, as in my relatives, were not very thrilled with this decision. As would be the case with most of the people in this room, I assume. So, but that's the thing about being young, you don't really think so much. You're just going with the flow. And I always tell people to take the most risk when you're young. Because even if it doesn't work out, you'll always know that you at least tried. And that's always important. If you don't try, you wouldn't know if it's worth it. And trust me, it always is. Anyhow, I started my first business at the age of 21, partnering with the same studio where I did my part-time job, with a friend of mine who is a musician who's actually here with me right now. And uh, we started small, we created a small media house and we took up any client that came on it. I, I still remember I even took up hosting a Marwadi cultural event because I just said yes to any kind of creative work opportunity. So in this way we created a very impressive client just by saying yes to opportunity. And I still remember at the age of 21, all I wanted was to look like a 32 year old. So that people would take me seriously as a businesswoman. So I, I gained weight, I wore these big glasses, had a bindi, ought to look all big and matured. And it did work, honestly. My proudest moments were uh, my kids of my clients would call me auntie. But that's not the same case now though. Anyhow, uh, in that 200 square feet dubbing studio, we slowly created our company called AOM Studios Private Limited. And I started a small division of my own with digital designing, which took the life out of me. See, being an artist or any profession at any field of work for that matter, it is very important to find the right area of work for you. And, I, and digital designing was not that for me. See, I knew I wanted to be an artist, but being specific, specific about the work that you want gets you specific work opportunities. So I started focusing more on traditional wall art works. And uh, it did work in, uh, from, we were doing pretty well as a media production company from 200 square feet area. We expanded to 2000 square feet area of commercial space. Life was good, money was flowing in, I was getting awards for being a young entrepreneur. And uh, all of a sudden something happened. And guess what happened? Corona happened. And life as you know it hit us hard. We had, we had to like literally burn our savings to help or you know uh, make sure that our company was not crashing down. But Long story short, we had to shut it down. So what I thought was the peak of my career, I crashed down with nothing to hold on to. So now I had no money, but I turned a talk from my relative saying how I made the wrong decision of starting a business and not taking up any government stable job and so on. But I wasn't going to, you know, fall down that easy. I picked myself up, packed up, Moved back to Kochi, leased out our studio and thought about plan B. See, to be very honest, I still had my wall art works to support me financially. But I knew I needed a side hustle. Now I'll tell you why this is very important. See, even if you love your job and you're passionate about the work that you do, if you 
do not have a side income to support you at a time of crisis. Trust me when I say that at some point of time you are going to hate your profession. Because you would have to take a project that do not excite you, that do not interest you, just so that you can meet your expenses. And I knew that was coming in my life. And so, I made another passion of mine into business, which brings us to the next chapter, GVQ Time Cafe. See, I love Kochi. And the best part about Kochi that I love is its cafe culture. And being born in Kochi, it gives you the moral right to daydream about owning your own cafe in Kochi. It's a fact. And I had this dream since childhood, I wanted my own cafe. This love blossomed into GVQ Time Cafe, the first ever time-based cafe in Kerala. Thank you. So, see, um, oh, that uh, really killed my flow. <laughs> uh, so, as I said, I did not have any uh, particular background in restaurant business, but I was ready to do the work. So, uh, I visited almost all the cafes in Kochi, you name it, I've been there. I spent a lot of money in these cafes also. And I even worked as a waitress in one of them to kind of get an idea of what it is to be, you know, working in a cafe and the workings of a cafe. And, uh, See, being creative, I wanted to create something apart from the ordinary. And that's how this concept came into being. It, it is a concept which made sense to me as a customer. A concept wherein time is charged and not food. You get unlimited beverages, unlimited snacks, and you can also bring food from outside. So it's like a nature lover's paradise. See, this being a new concept, I, just like everybody else around me, had my doubts about this being a success or people even recognizing this concept. But, as I said, if you are taking a risk at something that you're passionate about, it is always worth it. And the, and the response has been massively positive. See, taking up the you know, taking a risk or working with passion and desire as something that you love will at some point of time, if not now, but at some point of time will definitely get recognized. That I am very sure. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to burn your savings, that you have to go bankrupt. If you have an idea and a plan to execute that idea, definitely pitch it forward and get investors. It is crazy how many people do not follow their passion just because they are afraid to take the first step towards their dream. And this first step is the hardest part. And it is not hard as in the work sense. It is hard because it is the part where you do the most creative thinking. And that's not in a good sense. It is the part where you think a lot of negative thoughts. What if? What if people, it doesn't work out? What will people say? What if I uh, let my family down and all this, all this creative thinking happens in this first stage? Once you get past this first stage, then your dream is more attainable and realistic because you actually put in the work to kind of make it attainable. Okay, so being, saying all that, I think it is safe to say that we have reached to the last chapter for the talk and this small chapter this very small chapter of my life is called happiness now uh, see even when i had i was pursuing my cafe business i never stopped doing art i took up any project that was interesting enough for me and one of those projects was the 6,200 square feet area of wall art done at Madhava Pharmacy Junction. And that's the work there. See, it was 
actually a physically and mentally draining work which took almost a month to complete but when it was time for the big reveal it was all worth it. I was finally appreciated and acknowledged as an artist and it felt good. I don't know if this is a success story but it definitely is a happy story. And for me personally, success is directly proportional to happiness. And happiness keeps changing. One day it might be to bag a big project, like a work project. And one day it might be to find true love. And one day it might just be to stand on a TEDx platform and share your story. But whatever it may be, if every day I wake up and is grateful for all the experiences that I've had, and is looking forward to the day I call myself successful. If I had, and to be very honest, uh, I know that I'm not the most skilled or the most talented artist or entrepreneur out there, but I know I'm hungry enough to, to make mistakes, accept them, learn from them, and keep at it. If I had an opportunity to redo a part of my life, I think I would still make the choose the same path and make the same mistakes. Because that's the beauty of life. It's a mixture of successes and failures. And if you want to feel the most happiness from the biggest success, you need to experience the most sorrow from your biggest failures. So in this 28 years of my life, I've uh, done a desk job, owned a media house and crashed, became a digital designer, a wall artist, and a cafe owner. So, in a way, being the jack of all trades isn't that bad and thing really. You have one life, so why not make it a good one and try everything that you love? With that note, I would like to uh, say thank you all for bearing with me for these few minutes. And uh, thank you uh, TEDx TKM College of Engineering for giving me this opportunity to share my story. So yes, thank you. That's all.